Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. How lovely for you all to be tuning in. I'm a comedian, writer, actress person um, who's been tasked with a talk called How to Empower with Wit. And I've had various failures and successes in a 35 year span of trying to tap into wit as best means to communicate and even entertain. This can be done through words, gestures, delivery, or timing. Today, I'm doing words. And I hope to demonstrate how the use and practice of wit in organizations and arenas such as art, literature, government, it's not all going to be lists, but this is quite listy thus far, business, charities, and maybe even sex, although that's less predictable, can empower both the speaker and the audience, especially where a lack of wit has previously prevailed along with a lack of engagement. So it might be handy to define wit, if only to differentiate it from a joke. Wit is a natural aptitude for using words and ideas in a quick and inventive way to create humour. A joke is a thing that also intends to cause laughter, but has a setup and a punchline, which offers some sort of surprise if it's to cause laughter. Wit, on the other hand, offers a ripple effect of ironic recognition as a way of creating humour. Less of a leap, you might say, and far less bossy than having to wait for the punchline before you feel encouraged or permitted to laugh. I've often struggled with the tyranny of the punchline. I get anxious having to wait and follow the long build up to a gag and then arrange my face in the right way to let rip with a reactive laugh at the right time, by which time my anxiety um, has diminished my attention. So as a comedian in the 80s, there's a picture there, I'd often share a dressing room with male comedians who do joke telling as they psyched up to go on stage. So as a people pleaser, um, I'd be concentrating when to laugh and forget to psych up myself into a bucket or otherwise. So in the words of Dorothy Parker, there's a hell of a distance between wisecracking and wit. Wit has truth in it. Wisecracking is simply calisthenics with words. So she also said, the first thing I do in the morning is brush my teeth and sharpen my tongue. I just Googled some. The other one um, of many, scratch an actor and find an actress. So I'd far rather enjoy a more evenly distributed wordplay without the pressure of laughing at the payoff line, which has to be an exaggeration or a lie for it to be a surprise. So far better, a witty stream of consciousness, which is fast and truthful and gloriously meaningful. Obviously, we need both. Gags underpin a stand-up routine, but comedians do stand up for a job. Wit is about empowerment in an evolving society. So exciting doing a PowerPoint and nerve wracking, but that's fine, always do new things. Why does women's wit threaten? So women traditionally, I'm doing broad strokes here, have been more likely to be lusted after and demeaned than seen as socially equal. But a woman with a witty tongue could always offer an impactful blow with words. This could disarm and be an effective tool in self-defense as well as communication. More recently, the Me Too movement, which achieved a lot, was also accused by some as presenting women as being victims within the empowerment campaign. Whatever your view, wit is the opposite of victim. Wit is to be a dominator or an instructor or champion. So we could say that wit offers a tool to being a leader in a different way. If you ask a group of people why they might feel threatened by a conversation or a campaign or a TV chat show with celebrities or a current affairs debate, it's usually because they feel excluded or dominated, which in turn makes them annoyed, especially if they've invested to listen. Historically, witty speeches of note tended to be delivered by someone in authority, someone holding a leadership position women have still not caught up with the same amount of authoritative 
or senior positions. And where they do occupy those roles, we still have a society where some people innately resent it. It's still too much of a stretch for some people to overcome their social conditioning, to be comfortable with a woman who can disarm an entrenched debate with their use of witty words. So interestingly, it seems more acceptable to tolerate women's wit when it's delivered amongst themselves, socially annexed at a Hindu or Women's Institute forum, and less comfortable to enjoy or respond to a woman using wit with authority when in a mixed setting. These are generalizations. And I've been watching Married at First Sight Australia, which may be an influence. The polarization of behaviors are there for the cameras. I know that. Some men continue, I'm just doing the some men thing. Some men continue to undermine women's witty voices, even if it's subconscious, because witty women intrude on the status quo of male dominance. Where women do comedy as a job, it's perceived as being audacious. The fact that she calls herself a stand-up comedian demonstrates an already immodest belief that she thinks of herself as funny. This challenges deep-seated assumptions from wider society. Obviously, if the woman is a clown or doing funny voices and headscarf and impressions, then that's less conflicting when it comes to perception. But a woman just using wit as a tool for her work can be seen as a threat. But what about those women who don't do it as a job? I think it's important to see the benefits that a witty delivery can offer an evolving and more equal society. For a woman to prove herself and be heard, wit is her best tool. It gets you closer to landing your point. Levity is attractive. Wit is having a readiness to access the brain. Perhaps a certain type of man is still threatened by that. And perhaps there may be some women who are as well, particularly if you take the position that it's been socially ingrained to play the role of being a victim. Why would we enjoy our own sex becoming more dominating? But more good news. Women's wit doesn't have to be self-effacing or confessional either. It can be part of a more dominant initiative with irony and subtle ridicule and wordplay. In the words of Muriel Spark, ridicule is the only honorable weapon we have left. Some women are using a wit as a tool to rise above their self-effacing past and occupy a similar gladiatorial position to men as a means to being effective in the workplace and relationships. However, this good practice is also double-layered. Are women just copying the gladiatorial initiative, taking stance of men to get jobs on TV or other institutions which has a voice? It may be, it may not be. I'd like to think we're not. I'd like to think we don't have to copy men to be heard or judged, but we don't have to be self-effacing either. Wit can achieve a level playing field of delivery. So when I began in the 80s, all the older male comics played golf and the newer women comics were in the minority and had to compete for space. Positive discrimination is present now. Number ticking is a thing. But deep down, why are some people still threatened by women's wit? How can we change how we see the world to all embrace language's most magic bullet? Are we ready to encourage a more equal way of being? We may not be ready for a society where female comics go off for a game of chess while the men compete to get starter slots on the circuit, but we may be bridging a gap. As society evolves, wit shouldn't be the last ingredient of communication to lag behind. Will male comics see their own opportunities diminish and be threatened? Unlikely, but there is an unsaid joke going around that to be white, middle class and male is no longer marketable. Other people say you have to earn your position. As more women get parity in key roles in government, health service, TV panel games, we're seeing women harness this magic tool. But like getting the vote, it's not as fast or as obvious as one might think. If only we could show that wit releases us from the constraints of having to be seen as good as, as being as good as, but simply empowered in our own terms. I've been in Zoom meetings recently where men don't like me making a joke. It could be because the joke's rubbish, highly likely, but it also means that a lot of men just don't want a woman to be funny on their watch. It's about control. No one likes to be the butt of a gag. Where's the dignity in that? 
but wit can deliver content with a knowing humility, irony, self-ridicule, all manner of interesting layers of delivery can make a point land without having to denigrate its target. There's even more need than ever to grab wit and use it to unseat any notion of unnecessary dominance. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas.